The Western Jin Empire was born amid turmoil. Barbarians threatened the borders, while unrest stirred within. Only a ruler of surpassing wisdom and strength could hope to prevail against such odds. Unfortunately, the Western Jin had Sima Yan, an emperor of regrettably average talents. Sima Yan was not blind to his empire's plight. He instituted reforms, promoting men of humble birth, and sought to reinforce imperial authority. But Sima Yan suffered from a fatal flaw. No policy or initiative could hold his wandering interest for long. He left each measure half-achieved and ultimately in vain. For a time, Sima Yan applied himself diligently to governance. But with victory over Eastern Wu came spoils that undid his fleeting industry. From Sun Hao's harem and noble houses, Sima Yan claimed tens of thousands of concubines for his own. His decadence knew no bounds. He would frequently ride through his vast palace harem as his concubines sprinkled salt to tempt the goat pulling his carriage. Wherever the goat wandered, there Sima Yan would spend the night indulging his desires. A ruler thus consumed by lust and leisure had no thought to spare for the teetering empire. When Sima Yan died, his son Sima Zhong took the throne as Emperor Hui. But Sima Zhong, known as the Meat Porridge Emperor, proved even less fit to rule than his father. During his reign, his ruthless wife Empress Jiananfeng and powerful princes dominated. Initially, Empress Dowager Yang's father, Yang Jun, held sway at court. But his control and his life were cut short on Jiananfeng and Prince Sima Wei's order. The Grand Marshal, Prince Sima Liang, was next to die by Jiananfeng's hand. Then Sima Wei himself, the Empress Dowager, and even Sima Zhong's eldest son, Sima Yu. Jiananfeng's victims in total numbered five. Then Prince Sima Lun emerged, sealing Empress Jia's fate at last. He declared himself emperor, relegating puppet Sima Zhong to forced retirement. This angered other princes. Sima Zhong, Sima Ying, and Sima Yong joined forces to overthrow Sima Lun, restoring Sima Zhong to his throne. But Sima Zhong soon dominated the court in turn. Sima Yong and Sima Yi killed Sima Zhong, only to descend into rivalry themselves. Sensing opportunity, Prince Sima Yue attacked. He defeated Sima Yong and Sima Ying, removing all challengers to his control. At this time, the puppet Sima Zhong suddenly perished. His younger brother Sima Qi was installed as Emperor Huai. For 16 years, the Sima clan had torn itself asunder while their empire crumbled around them. As the dynasty decayed from within, opportunity arose for the barbarian. A Di chieftain named Li Xiong captured Chengdu and declared himself emperor of Cheng. The Xiongnu tribes, split and scattered under Chao Cao, had long dreamed of reunion. When Sima Yue attacked, Liu Yuan, chieftain of the left Xiongnu, begged Sima Ying, allow me to return home and I will unite the five tribes to aid you. Sima Ying agreed. Liu Yuan returned home, but in place of aid, he declared himself King of Han and founded his own state, Han Zhao, as history came to know it. Since the Eastern Han, rulers often employed barbarians as pawns against internal foes. The rebellion of the eight princes was no different. The Sima's plotting and violence had left their empire in ruins, defenseless against the wolves they had brought inside their gates. The five barbarians rose up as they sensed opportunity. The age of chaos had begun.